new video this time a tutorial about uh, rain how i did it uh, and uh, how you can do it too so as the past video i want just to go through the setup uh, a little bit how i did the comp and uh, i don't want to go through node by node because otherwise it's going to take forever and it's going to be overwhelming boring uh, so let's uh, take the concept and i'm sure uh, you can build the same so uh let's start well maybe i should show you the video first you are going to see with the youtube compression but uh, yeah the, the, there is a rain here if you can't tell um maybe i'll post a vimeo link uh, below so the effect is composed by four main things one is the ripple texture generator it's basically just uh, a generator of these which is an animated texture map that you can use uh, in the shader or uh, in comp, as I did. So it's very light, uh, you don't need to render. If you want to change the scaling uh, or the frequency, you can do it quickly in comp. So I found this workflow pretty great. Uh, then uh, I have uh, some 3D mist. This one is moving, uh, it's blown by the wind. And uh, instead of being like a full uh, VDB, a full uh, um, volume container uh, and uh, be heavy simulations, in this project I tried to make it uh, faster to render because I had only my workstation, right? Only, only my PC. So I found the best way was to create like a setup with uh, some wrangles, uh, vops. Uh, I made this. Uh, um, grids like layers of mist and it was quite fast and uh, from my very crap machine at the time it, like it was very easy to handle and uh, yeah i'm going to show to you later then uh, we have some drips uh, which are falling from the objects that we have in the scene in this case i've put uh, our dear flippy inside and yeah there is a little bit too much, but uh, you get the concept. It's just a uh, rain that is uh, dragged by the wind uh, outside of the objects. And uh, here we have the rain, which are just particles. Uh, and then uh, we create the splines later on. So let's go into Dinim. So instead of the spaceship uh, here in this project, uh, um, you can find uh, Flippy, because uh, this spaceship wasn't mine, it was uh, ripped from, from a video game, I didn't want any issues, so yeah, I found it like this. Uh, we have then the ground, which is just a plane. So this is basically the same camera that uh, I have in the other project. And let's go inside the, this one. So, how does it work? So, this is the ripple solver. Basically, on this option, you decide uh, the grid resolution, the texture resolution. On this one, you decide, uh, of course, uh, uh, of the simulation itself. But uh, I found it like a these uh, to be quite good you can increase it but uh, there is no need i guess with this you decide how many drops there are any at any frame and uh, of course if you put two it's like a calm pond with some uh, ripples on it and if you look there is like uh, some displacement going on and uh, if you increase it uh, 
this is like um, a rainstorm or something more heavy. <clears throat> you can cache it here. So you press cache, you then click read cache, it's going to read the caches, and then you can bake on this path. And it's going to bake, uh, I don't remember how many frames, to be honest. I think the full frame range. Uh, yeah, but you can increase it here, uh, like put uh, more frames, it's up to you. We are going to make it loop anyway, later on in comp, so it doesn't really matter. And yeah, it's, it's a comp network. Basically, the texture that you're going to get is uh, read by this hex field. So there is a hex field. Uh, there is a wrangle to create like the initial drops. Then there is a solver where the magic happens. And uh, it's, I, it's not going to be very well readable here. Okay. And this is just a solver. I found this uh, wrangle on old force. And uh, it works quite well. I have to say, the guy was a genius, the one that created this. We have then the ground, and uh, this is uh, just a grid with some uh, UV projector and UV transform. And that's it. And this is basically just uh, to. We're going to export the vid attribute uh, in Mantra for comp, so later we can project uh, the ripples. Uh, this. Then I have these ground splashes, uh, which I haven't spoke before. So basically, importing the ground, I'm scattering points. Uh, if you see here. With a seed, I'm then culling the ones that are not uh, visible to the camera because uh, I want to keep it light since uh, for all these points uh, I'm going to uh, instance some, uh, some animations. Oh, here I forgot to mention there is also some padding. So if the camera is uh, turning around, uh, like we don't see a place where there aren't yet. Uh, the raindrops uh, or these uh, little splashes, sorry. Uh, so we have uh, then a solver. Here we have uh, some attributes. Uh, we I create the life, the age, uh, the p scale, uh, some random orientation, and uh, it's just random on the y axis rotation. It's just to avoid the repetition and to be too obvious that we are going to we are using the same uh, ripple effect and uh, here is the solver the real solver where it is uh, basically uh, accumulating the rain splashes so we kill the ones that are out of our range just to keep it light again once again And uh, here it is, the cache. So here, I'm basically just uh, modifying the p-scale to make it uh, just smaller. And here is where the magic happens. So basically, on this node, we are instancing uh, these, which I'm reading from the disk, and uh, you can find it on the folder. I'm reading this one, and it's just a static frame, right? I'm loading the second frame. Here I'm instancing and are packed disk. The packed disk are not standard geometries, right? Each one of these is a one packed disk. And uh, so what it's doing is reading uh, the geometry from the disk, and uh, it knows uh, where the geometry is based on an attribute, 
which is called the it's a primitive intrinsic which is called the unexpanded file name. So this attribute tells Houdini where to go get this file, right? So what I did after to animate this if you look here is that I'm changing this parameter and I'm animating it using this frame and the age. So the rain, the rain is quite easy to do. It's basically just a grid, a transform, a very big grid is 40 meters by 50. It's so like covering the entire scene. Then there is a transform to move it up, some scattering of points, setting some initial P scale, loading the collision geometries, and uh, here I am I'm loading the points. I'm adding some uh, variation in the initial velocity and va variance. Then uh, here I have some wind. some noises uh, just to create uh, uh, the impression of the rain uh, which is swirling with the wind which because in my scene uh, the wind was uh, quite strong uh, so i have to put it like this you can de decrease it of course same here some pop wind for the same reason a pop drag uh, to create some variation in the speed uh, of fall of the drops uh, and killing it below the ground so yeah, let's time shift just to have some pre-roll and uh, this is the result. I hope you can see. Yeah, this is the result. Um, then I'm creating some lines by Let's look here. So I have the initial particles. I'm offsetting it a little. If you see, based on the velocity. And I'm creating some lines. For each line, it should be disabled. I have the curve view attribute enabled. And this is to create UVs. Why we need the UVs? Because in the shader you can create uh, some fake specular on it. I learned that uh, making some good rain, good looking rain, you need some uh, freedom in comp and you like uh, the look is basically how this reacts to the light. It's all it is. Because there is nothing special on the shader. It's just, uh, you know, in the comp, is how, how you comp it. For example, when the lights hit from behind, or it, it, uh, it is in a shadow aura area, or it's in a light area, like it behaves and looks completely different. So that's something I'm going to speak about it later on. But uh, yeah. Just to mention it, here I'm uh, setting the P scale and that's it.